All right, today's notes with overlapping triangles. Okay, so that means one triangle is placed over the top of the other. So if you have highlighters, let's highlight this one in orange. So here's the larger triangle, PQR. And it's helpful to draw the two triangles separately. So the larger one down here in orange is PQR. And then we took another triangle, a smaller one, and put it right over the top. And that would be this triangle right here. We put it over the top so that P okay, matches up with the uh, P in the smaller one. So those angles are congruent. And then here would be the S and here would be the T. So let's write the um, similarity statement. So I'm going to say P, triangle PST is similar to triangle PQR. And just to review, your corresponding, the angles are congruent. Okay, we already mentioned that P is congruent to itself. So let's give P a measure of 10 degrees. Let's say that S is 70. So which angle over here in triangle PQR is 70? P. Nope, the P is 10. It would be Q, good. So 70 is here. So there's the S in the smaller one, Q in the larger, 70, 70, which is a sum of 80. So this has to be 100 for 180. And then this would be 100. So angle P is congruent to P. Next in line is the S is congruent to Q. I don't need a picture. And then T is congruent to R. Which side, so I'm looking at the corresponding sides, which side, we'll start with the smaller one on the left, which side over on PQR corresponds with, I'm going to use color, I'll pick P. So PS corresponds to which side over here? PQ, good. So that's in pink. And then that ratio is equal to, we'll pick red. ST corresponds to PR or QR? QR, good. So ST corresponds to QR. And then those that are not colored, PT would correspond to PR. With overlapping triangles, I would encourage you to draw them separately. Do you have to? No. Some of you can see it right in the picture. Okay, so you can leave it in the picture. So if I look at question number one, it says that in this triangle ABC, DE is parallel. So let's mo uh, note the parallel sides. It says that DE, that side is three of the smaller triangle, and then AC, that side of the larger triangle, is 8. If BD is 6, find the measure of AB, so all the way across, I'm going to call that X. See if you can set up the proportion. I'm going to take the time to draw them separately, but if you want to look at it and see if you can line up the corresponding sides, see if you can write your proportion. The smaller triangle and I don't need to label it with letters. If I keep all the sides in its respective positions, the left is six, the bottom's three. In the larger triangle, what's the left side? I know the bottom's eight, what's the left side? The left side is, no. Nope. The left side goes all the way from A up to B. And since that's what we had to find, that's what I called X for the unknown. And as we talked about in the warm-up, Colton, there's going to be more than one way to write the proportion. I'm going to do left to bottom. So 6 over 3 equals left to bottom. So that's X over 8. Your cross product, I'm going to write that over here. So cross multiply 3 times X is 3X. And then 6 times 8 is 48. Divide by 3. And x is equal to 
16 is correct. It wants the length of AB, so not X equals, but AB equals 16. So you guys take a minute to draw your picture for number two. If you're watching the video, pause it, draw your picture, and then restart it again. So what does the picture look like in the second one? Okay, so if we start by drawing the pink one, this part here says D is a point on CA, so D I'm going to put right here. It's on CA, and then E is a point on CB, but most importantly it has to be parallel. If it has to be parallel to AB, I'm going to kind of sketch that parallel line first. It has to be parallel, and it says E is a point on CB, so this is E. So knowing that it's going to be parallel, I'll use that to help me um, put point E on there. Now to mark the picture, it says C to D is 4. C to A, the whole thing is 6. This whole side. And then C to E, oh, given BC, which is this whole side, is 9. Find CE, I'm going to call that X. So I am going to draw these two triangles separately. We have the bigger one. We have the smaller one. You don't have to. And the bigger one, this whole side's 9. This whole side is 6. And the smaller one, this is X. This is 4. The proportion. Can anyone tell me what the proportion would be? Corresponding sides are proportional. So let's do Colton. Can we do it backwards since I already wrote it? 6 over 9. And then 4 over X. Good. So we did bottom to the top right and then bottom to the top right. So then cross multiply. 9 times 4 is 36. 6 times X is 6X. Divide by 6 and X is? Yes. Find CE. CE was the X. So CE equals 6. Really? On the back side, it says in the diagram to the right, we have triangle PQR, and QS is parallel to RT. So this is parallel to this. And then it says PR, this whole side from here to here, is 8. Q to R is 2. Well, if the whole is 8 and part of it's 2, what's the other part? Six. Good, Tony. 6. P to S, so from here to here is 9. What's S, T, all the way across? I'm going to call that X. So I will draw them separately. So here's the smaller one. We have one side 6, the other side 9. And then here's the bigger one. One side is 8, the other side is X. Can anyone tell me how they want to set up the proportion here? So small, left to right, we can do left to right here, so 6 to 9 equals left to right here, 8 to X. So in regards to the 2, there's just a question about leaving out this 2 here. Is this 2 a side of a triangle? No. It's part of this whole side. So given the whole side, so that's why they gave you that part and they gave you the whole so that you, are you with me, Colton? Yeah. So that you could subtract the 2 from the 8 to get the 6. So the smaller triangle is here. So there's why we have the 6 to 9. And then the larger triangle in green, we know that whole side's 8 and that whole side is X. Okay? okay? So now cross products, 6 X, or 6 times X is 6 X, and 9 times 8 is 72. 6 does go into 72 evenly. What's that? 12. 12 is right. Nice job. So ST equals 12. Did I move too fast? Take a minute to read the, line, or the words here before I go over this triangle proportionality theorem. You can see the root word is proportion. So in deciding that we're most comfortable and we want one last thing to memorize, we're going to continue to break them apart. So we're not going to memorize this theorem. We're going to be consistent in the learning. So let's go right on to the last few examples. So something must be different in what's given. It says in the diagram, that's still the same. That's parallel to that. 
the ratio of AD to DB, so what that means is this is the AD and this is the DB, is 2 to 5. Okay? With well, a ratio question, though, what do we add to that? The X. So AD, 2X, DB, 5X. Right? With ratios? All right. And then it says that CE measures 6. So C to E is 6. Find the measure of EB. I'm going to call that X. So let's draw the triangle separate. So here's the small one. Um, so the one side is 5x, this is x, and the bigger triangle, what's this whole side? Mm -hmm. 7x, good. We got to add the 5x and the 2x together to get 7x, and then this whole side would be what? Not 6x, but we added them. So instead of writing on the left side 5x plus 2x, we just wrote 7x. But when you add the x and the 6, can you add those? No. No, because the x doesn't have a like term. So you leave it x plus 6. So now let's write the ratio. I'm going to do left to right. So 5x over x equals left to right. 7x over x plus 6. Now we have to cross multiply. So let's do this over here. What is 7x times x? 7x, x times x? Nope. x squared. Good, the second power. Now we have to do 5x times x plus 6. So you write the answer, 5x times x plus 6. We have to distribute. Be 5x squared plus 5 times 6? 30x. 30x. Subtract the 5x squared over so you can combine it with like terms. And we end up with um, 2x squared equals 30x. Do you want a factor or no? Okay, so you want to know what you could do? Since there's an x on both sides, you can divide each side by x to get rid of the x on the left. And 2x squared divided by x would just be 2x equals 30. You can cancel an x on each side. Okay? And then divide by 2, and what's x? 15. Good. We had to find EB, though. EB in the question was the x, so EB equals 15. Last one. We're running out of room. DE is parallel to BC. AD, this is all numbers, so this should be easier. A to D is 10. A to B the whole side is 24. A to C, this whole side is 36. Find A to E. I'm going to call that X. So I'm going to draw those separately. Here's the little one. Left is 10, right is X. What's the left side of the big one? No, nope. you might just might ha I might have sloppy handwriting. That's not a 14, but a 24. Oh, the big triangle, oh, you were subtracting, right? So yeah, DB would be 14, but when you're drawing the triangle separately, you go all the way down, right? So it would be the 24, and then what's the right side? This whole side all the way down is 36, good. So I don't actually need, we didn't need this, and we didn't need this, because those weren't sides of a triangle, correct? They were just parts. So let's do left to right. So 10 over x equals left to right, 24 over 36. 10 times 36 is 360. 
24 times x is 24x. We just need to know how many times 24 goes into 360. Two times 24 would be 48. Gotcha. So what is it? 15. So x is 15. Was AE our x? It was. So AE equals 15.